we all live busy lives. If you are someone who has a full-time job, family, or a fresher with a lot of activities and you want to switch your career or get a better paying job, you need to be strategic about your time management. Unfortunately, we do not live in the matrix where someone can just insert a plug in your head and you can just learn anything you want. You need to know which technologies are the best to learn for you to get the maximum amount of salary and which technologies you should avoid. In this video, we are going to go over the best technologies you should learn and the technologies you should avoid. I'm going to take a data-driven approach to this. I'm going to use the latest Stack Overflow developer survey. So I got my uh, Stack Overflow coffee mug for that, as well as LinkedIn jobs data. All right, let's get started. So this video is divided into four di distinct categories. Number one, which cloud should you learn? Number two, what technology you should learn? Number three, should you learn a programming language? If yes, what? And number four, what are the salaries or some of the most common jobs? Regarding what cloud to learn, AWS remains the most used cloud platform. AWS also is the most loved and wanted cloud platform. So there are two ways to go about it. If your company is adopting a cloud, doesn't matter whether it's AWS, you should learn that cloud because uh, you, it's easier to switch jobs internally and get experience. If you are a fresher or you need to apply outside of your current company to get a cloud job, then learn AWS. Another thing to note was last year, Google Cloud was number two, but this year Azure took over Google Cloud. And actually you could see this for yourself. You should always look up how many jobs are available in your country or in your area. So in India, if I search GCP, there are around 9,332 jobs. If I search Azure, there are around 28,000 jobs. And if I search AWS, there are around 37,000 jobs. Yes, AWS has the most competition, but also AWS has significantly more number of jobs. Remember that even if the competition is high, you need to know what particular area you should learn. Okay, there are a lot of people who know AWS, but do they know some of the other technology that we are going to cover based on the market data? So if you know those technologies along with AWS, your chance of getting hired becomes significantly higher. So what technologies should you learn? So I don't want to sound too braggy, but I created a similar video last year, you can go watch, and I predicted that Docker and Kubernetes will become even more popular. So as you could see, this year, Docker and Kubernetes are number one and number two. I will make another prediction. In next year or in next two years, Kubernetes will overtake Docker. So what I would recommend is learn Kubernetes you do not need to go super deep on Docker. You can start learning Kubernetes and when you go through Kubernetes, any good Kubernetes material will teach you the part of Docker that you need to know. And as part of my job, I interact with hundreds of customers and I could see I get a lot more Kubernetes specific questions than the Docker specific questions. Now, one question I get is, is learning AWS and Kubernetes enough to get a job? So the answer is, if you are actually learning AWS and Kubernetes, there are some other stuff that you will learn along the way. For example, to run Kubernetes commands or to do anything, you need to know some Linux commands because you need to create a file, delete a file, or even learn how to do kubectl, how to run it, how to troubleshoot it. Also, you need to know Git and GitHub because Kubernetes at the end of the day is a tool to run your application but you need to know how to uh, clone your application from one of the code repositories such as GitHub, how to change it, how to do pull requests, reviews, rejects, all that stuff. Just a quick note, if you are someone who is looking to learn system design, Kubernetes, the full DevOps technology stack, Git, GitHub, serverless cloud formation, all my best-selling and highest rated courses are on sale. 
check out the reviews, check out the free videos. All my courses come with 30 day money back guarantee. Discounted link given in the description. All right, back to the video. For DevOps jobs, you also should learn one of the infrastructure as code. The most popular infrastructure as code right now is Terraform. So if you are a fresher or you have to apply outside, you should definitely learn Terraform. But if your existing company is using CloudFormation, then you can run CloudFormation. Now, what tools should you avoid? So there are some tools which will give you very less value and not the best use of your time. So Chef and Puppet are in this category. If you have limited time, you should not learn Chef and Puppet because the number of interview questions that you will get on Chef and Puppet is very low. Now, another thing when you talk about technology is database. Uh, so generally, when you go for interview, the interviewer want to see whether you know the cloud, know one of these technologies, along with those Linux and Git, as well as have you worked in the database. Because at the end of the day, whether the application is running on-prem or on the cloud, everyone will store data in a database. So in databases, one good thing is there are two broad categories. One is relational databases and NoSQL. If you learn SQL, so SQL stands for Structured Query Language, then it kind of covers almost all relational databases. So if you know how to write a select query, how to join, how to performance optimize one of the relational database, that pretty much applies to almost all database. So learn SQL. And then PostgreSQL is the most popular, so you could learn that. But to give an example, I actually started my career on DB2, so IBM Database 2. And for that, I needed to learn SQL. And whatever I learned, I transferred over to PostgreSQL. And once you learn the SQL part, you can use MySQL, you can use SQLite, you can use Microsoft SQL Server. Because most of the jobs are on the application teams. Unless you are doing like administration of database, you don't need to know the inner workings of PostgreSQL, MySQL, SQLite, right? Because with all this cloud technology being popular, most of the administration is done by the cloud technology itself. Like if you are using PostgreSQL on Amazon RDS, you don't need to know how Amazon is managing the underlying servers. So learn one SQL and learn one NoSQL. So I highly recommend DynamoDB if you are learning AWS. If you are not on AWS, then you can learn MariaDB. Again, the NoSQL concepts are same. So DynamoDB, as you could see, is 9.42 percentage which is the highest amongst all the cloud NoSQL databases. Now let's discuss about a hotly debated topic. Should you learn coding or no? So it depends on the job you want to get. So let's go over the salary data of what kind of jobs pays, how much money, and then we're gonna explore the coding part. So this is the salary data for all the positions. Uh, so as you could see, the senior executive such as CIO, CEO, Vice President, etc., has the highest amount of salary, so $117,000 per year. If I switch to India, kind of the same engineering manager and then senior executive. But then again, remember the amount of jobs that these management positions have is much, much lower than the other jobs. So if you're someone who likes to manage people, go for it. So a lot of these things are overlapping. Uh, so for example, the site reliability engineer is kind of part of DevOps these days. Cloud infrastructure engineer is definitely DevOps. So cloud infrastructure engineer is someone who is in charge of provisioning new resources in the cloud, creates DevOps pipeline. Similarly, DevOps specialist. So sometimes these surveys, you know, uh, different companies have different titles. Like in one company, DevOps job will be under DevOps specialist. Some company will title it as DevOps engineer, some company will be cloud infrastructure, some company will be site reliability engineer, etc. So as you could see for DevOps jobs, it's around 80, 90,000, $100,000 per year salary. That's pretty high. So one question you might ask is, where is the solutions architect jobs, right? So if I even if I go down, there is no solutions architect here, which I am. It's because this is a survey there are less number of solutions architects than DevOps jobs. So what I would do is look at the salary data and then always go back 
and find how many jobs you have. So let's for example, if I search DevOps in India, it has around 25,000 jobs. And then once you have the numbers, dive deep a little bit, like what technologies you must have for these jobs and what technologies are nice to have. Uh, so browse some of the popular jobs in your area, let's say for DevOps, and then you will get an idea what kind of technology you should prioritize. And remember that uh, these are just average data. So don't think, oh, data scientists, they are making less money than uh, DevOps folks. By on average, which is true, because then again, data scientist is a broad category, but some data scientists are making way more than what senior executives are making. Some senior executives are making way less than the product manager is making. It's all over the place, but this is the general trend. But how about dedicated developers who are just doing software development? Uh, so if we look front-end developers get paid around 61,000, full stack 68, back-end around 69,000, makes sense. Uh, most of the business logic and the most amount of development jobs are actually in the back-end. Also, this is just a general trend. Always take salary information with a grain of salt because I know developers who get paid way more than senior executives. Uh, so now that you, you kind of know the salary, you know which area you are interested in. Also know that if you are interested in a technology, let's say you are a security guy, you really like security, you are going to be more interested in doing certification, diving deep in that area, and at the end, you will have a pretty high salary. But anyway, let's say you want to be a full stack developer, you should learn Python, because as you could see this year, Python and Rust, they are tied because Python is very versatile. Python can be used in DevOps engineering, data science engineering, full stack development, backend development. Uh, so Python is even now becoming popular for the front end with the Flask framework. Stay away from COBOL, SAS, Delphi. I will end this video by saying don't do analysis paralysis. Sometimes you do so much analysis that you can't even decide which one is number one, which cloud should you learn. You, you worry too much. Hey, if I learn AWS, am I going to miss out on something? Is the competition too much? Based on what we discussed, pick one cloud, couple of the top technologies and get started. Don't just keep doing analysis paralysis.